Um, so good, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you for coming to my talk um, called Six Weeks on the Dark Side. Um, my name is Marge. I've forgotten how to use a computer. Um, so a bit about me. Um, I don't do presentations very often, but recently when I was talking to some other people about um, doing this presentation, um, they said, oh, yeah, I remember the last one you did. It was something about consolidating a whole bunch of websites. Um, don't remember much except the part where you said you fell through a trampoline and didn't spill your drink. Um, so anyway, I'm happy to say that um, since, since then, uh, since that time, um, I've stayed safe during work events. Um, so I've been involved with Drupal for just over a decade. Um, I'm a senior consultant at Annex, um, which is based in Canberra, Australia, um, where I've been for almost two years. And prior to that, I was in the public service for about 16 years. Um, I spent most of my time since 2017 working on GovCM, GovCMS sites almost exclusively. Um, in the last couple of years, I've been uh, become interested in doing uh, Google Anal Analytics and doing th things with Tag Manager. And I'm also on the Drupal South Steering Committee and also a co-organiser of the uh, Drupal ACT meetups. Um, so when I'm not touching computers, I like to spend time outside, nowhere near them, um, trying to take photos um, of wildlife. Um, I also support the Essendon Football Club, love watching Test Cricket, and I have two black greyhounds. Um, so this is a story about a GovCMS uh, SAS project that went from kickoff to forklift in six weeks. Um, there'll be some technical slides, but it's, aim, uh, but it's aimed towards anyone who wants to know how we sort of built a site sort of overall, um, and how we got it finished on time despite a few issues arising. So the client um, is Safe Work Australia. Um, so a bit about them, they develop um, the Australian national policy relating to workers, uh, work health and safety and workers' compensation um, stuff. Um, so you can visit their website to learn more about them. Um, and they're also quite active on uh, LinkedIn and so on, and they've got some good stuff about being safe at work. Um, so Annex was already supporting their main site, which is the one here, not the one, one I did. Um, so this is their main website. Um, which we inherited about 18 months ago. And last year they came to us saying, oh, we'd like you to build a new site called uh, the Safe Work Australia Interactive Data Website. And this will be a site that aims to make their work health and safety and workers' compensation data more accessible using interactive dashboards um, from their online data collections. So the timeline was six weeks um, and six weeks uh, it can definitely drag on when you're waiting for something in the post or whatever, but it goes extra quick when you're building a website. Um, the sprints were two weeks in length, so it was a, a three sprint project. Um, and at, in our initial kickoff meeting, we had close to 30 people, perhaps more, actually turn up. And at the time, I'm just looking at all these people, like how am I meant to be in stand-up each, each day with so many people, I'm meant to you know, explain what I'm doing. But um, day to day, there was probably only four to six people that turned up, so that was good. So the dark side um, refers to the theme colours or the colour palette that is used um, on the site. The top right here called grey 900 um, was the background um, with the other greys below being backgrounds for other components on the site. Uh, the brighter colours, say the red and blue, are used minimally on the site, um, for example, hyperlinks and buttons and so on. And then the uh, white is the text. So, after finding out the colours to be used on this site and reflecting upon my interests, I decided this was going to be a site I'd enjoy working on. Um, as for actually working on the project, um, so our, our annex project team was made up of five people. Uh, two of us were uh, full time on the project and three were on for varying um, other st like stages of the project. Um, so Full time um, was Quinn, who was here today. Thank you for coming along. <laughs> um, he was primarily a test up and moving into a delivery manager role, pretty much any role that needs filling at the moment. He's amazing. Um, and then also myself as the uh, dev and tech lead. Um, our engagement lead, Jen, popped in to make sure uh, we're all, all on track. And she did a lot more before and sort of behind the scenes stuff. She wasn't on the pro, she wasn't coming to, to meetings every day, but she was doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Um, then we had our designer, Matt, who came in as required. And then we had another developer, um, Adam, who styled components alongside me. And he was there for maybe 90% of the project, so basically the whole time. Um, so for, as for the content on the site, it's a, it's a brand new site, so there was no um, migration 
uh, planning done. Um, we did have to integrate uh, Power BI dashboards and also replicate a tool called the Lost Time Inju Injury Frequency Rates Calculator. Um, so it's actually a tool that's available, already available on the main website um, and it was being replicated rather than transferred. Um, so I was aware that, of this calculator but not entirely sure how it worked. Um, but yeah, maintaining two things I wouldn't recommend doing, but that's how it, it goes. Uh, so anyway, this calculator turns out it uses a multi-field taxonomy term, um, a REST, export view, and some JavaScript. And although there are four um, fields per term, there are around 120 entries often nested three deep. So I'm not sure if anyone else here has used um, taxonomy terms a lot, but sometimes, this is perhaps more Drupal 7, if, you, if the list got long and they started sort of jumping around, getting out of order, and it was just really bad, I guess. Um, anyway, luck, I'm happy to say that this, that didn't happen um, on this one, because that would have been a nightmare to fix. Um, so anyway, in hindsight, I wish I'd sus sussed out the calculator beforehand. It was very tedious to do all this manual data entry. Um, and for some reason, I thought I'd knock it over in a couple of hours. It was more like a five or six hour job. It was really tedious anyway. Anyway, this example here shows the nested select list, or like a taxonomy term hierarchy under the industry there. So you've chosen the first one, then you can, then pop, second one pops up, you choose the second one. Um, and then you put in the numbers below, and then it uh, hit calculate, and it comes up with a answer. Um, so I suspect I've put the numbers in wrong here, but that's just yeah, how it would look if you did it. Yeah. Um, so the style of the show and the reason for building the site is the um, data visual visualizations. Power BI was the tool already in use, so we needed to figure out the best way to um, display it. There's essentially two options of how to get the data visualizations um, from Power BI onto the site. One is called Publish to Web, where an iframe is created, and the other, which is more secure and flexible, called Embedded for Customer. Um, so as this was a six-week uh, project, we just, um, we, and we discussed the pros and cons of each, we decided to go with the publish to web option, which is the iframe option. Um, so all I needed to do was supply the um, data people, visualization people with some breakpoints um, and the color, theme colors to keep everything on the dark side. Um, and the breakpoints are needed because the iframes out of Power BI aren't, aren't um, they don't resp they're not responsive, so yeah. So it's a bit, a bit clunky, but um, it's a proof of concept, so that's what we thought was best. Um, design. Um, so this project started, um, started off with the design actually being provided to us uh, from the client, sort of, a, it's kind of a dark version of their primary site. So on the left, the white one is their main site that was already live, and then here is what, we, um, what they gave us. Um, so I really like this because we could have a good idea of what they wanted. Um, and just yeah, a general vision, a uh, general feel for what their vision was. Um, so often we'll get supplied um, either a logo or branding colors, and there's a lot of back and forth um, with design ideas. So this, you know, sort of, we were sort of so far, so many steps ahead than what we could have been at this stage. Um, so you may have noticed um, that some of the sections on the homepage don't quite line up. There's like different widths of things. Um, so our designer quickly knocked out another version of the homepage. So you can see it takes all the, um, all the components that the client wanted, but put it in a, um, a, a better order. Um, so anyway, this got, quickly got the tick of approval, so work could begin. However, <laughs> um, although SafeWork had done the right thing and arranged my access to GovCMS systems, I didn't have access to the GovCMS dashboard or added to the GovCMS support ticketing system for the SafeWork team. Um, so it took, this took a bit of back and forth um, to sort out, but by the end of the first week, my access was good to go. So just keep in mind, this is the first week out of six weeks. So it's a, it feels a lot like you're losing a lot of time. Um, so my sidekick, Adam, hadn't worked on a GovCMS site before. Although I'm comfortable using Pygmy and Ahoy to set up a local GovCMS site, um, every other project we do at Annex um, uses Lando. And honestly, I hadn't actually used Lando until I joined Annex. So um, there we go. Um, so anyway, with access sorted and wanting Adam to get stuck into work, I set up our repo to include a Lando YAML file, a composer file, and a few other things um, needed for this to work um, with the GovCMS SAS site locally. And, al and although this workaround is okay enough, it's, um, 
easy for, um, for it to fall behind without actively keeping the composer files up to date. Um, so if Lando was an option included in the Gov, in GovCMS alongside with Pygmy and Ahoy, I think it would give um, developers an option to use something they're perhaps more familiar with. And on that note, I know there is some talk about that happening, but I'm not sure. It's like very, very early stages, but I really hope it's something that um, GovCMS and everyone involved can uh, get, get um, going. Um, unfortunately, during the second week, there was an update to GovCMS sites that seemed to have issues um, for a few days, which is pretty uncommon. You often do have the update comes through and it's, you, sort of, you can't push for an hour or, or a day or something. But for whatever reason, it just seemed to be not working for me. Um, although config was enabled on the site, there just seemed to be problems deploying config changes. And at this stage, it's mostly just enabling modules. Um, and it's quite limiting along with being incredibly frustrating. Um, I pretty much had four days of failed deployments, but then the occasional one worked, although I pushed up the same code. Um, at one point, I had some other devs watch me as I screen shared and went through the same process um, for it to work, and then it would just fail the next time. Um, I did support I did a log a, a support ticket um, to have the modules enabled, but I suspect it was a busy uh, time of year. It just didn't get actioned. And I think another thing for that is that because it's not a live site, you sort of get lower priority. Um, so I wouldn't say this is a typical way things get handled. I think it was just like a bad week for asking for things. Um, so by the third week, it still wasn't working. Um, so that Monday morning, I had a chat to my delivery manager um, about changing to developing off the GovCMS Gov CM, Gov platform because I was simply out of ideas. We'd been open with our issues with the Safe Work team and um, within a few hours, everyone was on board to switch over to Platform SH, who we'd host our non-gov CMS sites with and do some other development uh, things with. By around 2 p.m., I could enable the modules I needed and transferring any config I could to this new shiny development, development environment. That afternoon, I felt like I'd achieved more uh, in eight hours than I had the two weeks prior. Deployments were looking, well, sorry, deployments were working within five minutes and things were looking great. Um, so during the last year or so, Annex have been using Tailwind CSS in projects. Um, so Tailwind CSS is an open source CSS framework, and I'm just paraphrasing how they've described it. Um, so there's no pre-made classes or elements or, like buttons or tables similar to how Bootstrap would work. Um, so instead, it, it creates a list of utility CSS classes that can be used um, to style each element by mixing and matching stuff together. Um, so I was reasonably excited to be able to start a theme from scratch, as pretty much all my work had been um, sort of adapting myself to other people's themes rather than creating them brand new. Then it dawned on me I hadn't actually started a new theme for around five years. Um, it was on Drupal 7, most likely with um, the Omega theme, and I just remember how it would work really well with Drush. You'd just like spin something, it was all good. Um, so I was able to get a theme set up, no worries, but it was getting Tailwind to work, which had me stumped, and input from other devs at the time um, on how to fix it just, again, weren't working. Um, so I trawled through all our sites that used Tailwind, mostly to find that there was always something different enough that I couldn't just do a copy and paste job to get it working. Um, and this was a task I was working on also while the deployments were failing too. So of course, by this time I'm feeling a bit, eh, what am I doing? Um, you know, should I quit and work on a farm kind of thing? What am I doing? Should I hand my you know, dev badge back in? Anyway, in the end, I actually found a Tailwind theme that had been uh, set up with uh, for Drupal. Uh, without anything in the way, it was just good to go kind of thing. Um, so thank you to whoever made that. I believe it did say it wasn't for production use, but I was I sort of just ignored that bit. Um, it was all good. Um, so I did some minor config changes. Um, so CSS nesting would compile properly and we were set to go. Um, and this happened around the start of the third week and this was the final obstacle we had to start smashing out our work. Um, so over the project, I created mostly most of the config components, so the paragraphs, the blocks, the views, um, and taxonomy, all those kinds of things. And I then set up the twig file so that the other developer could style these items. Um, so people who don't know, a twig file is like a template file, um, and they out of the box they work complete, they're perfectly fine. Um, but if we clone them into our own theme, we can have better control over where things display. So a, a high level one might be just a whole page, so you've got the header, the content in the middle and the footer, and then that can go down to each component can have a, a twig file or a template file. Um, so hopefully this might, might explain it, might not. Um, 
So this is um, the bits that are printing out the icon, uh, the title, the summary, and a button. Um, so the other developer, Adam, uh, predominantly worked on the home page components um, and ensured that they were responsive and matched the design. And he also did the header and footer stuff too. Um, so there were three content types used on this site. Um, this, we just reused the standard page, the type that comes with the GovCMS out of the box. And then I created two more content types to match the content requirements. Um, we probably could have had one, but it's probably better to split some of these out. Um, so on all the, all the content types, there's a section at the top that displays the title in summary in like a hero banner type of thing. Um, so this is the standard page. So there's that, then there's the breadcrumbs, a left-hand nav, and body text. So it's, there's nothing fancy going on. It's just sort of a standard layout. Um, so at the top is also an option for the hero area to include a background image and also um, some cards. And that's a component that we've reused from the home page. And then a, a tint or like overlay color is applied to the background image so that the color contrast for accessibility on the text is always um, compliant and also felt like it was keeping it on brand by making it a bit darker. Um, on mobile, the left-hand menu turns into an accordion and everything stacks, which is pretty standard and um, how I would expect it to work. Um, next one is the catalog content type, and this is similar to the standard page. It just had some different paragraphs that you could choose from. Um, and I guess the only the, a reason I would separate them out is for the ease of like path order. So when you when a, a, a content author goes in to create a new page, the URL will print out the correctly kind of thing. And um, also, I had two different menus um, for left hand nav, so that was that's why I would have two different content types that are similar for that reason. And then, um, then the interactive data content type is the one that holds the Power BI dashboard code. Um, so it's where the iframe paragraph, which is used, is, is available. Um, so compared to other content types, this is a single width content page with no left-hand navigation. And this screen shows a comparison of how the Power BI generated iframes display on from mobile, mobile, tablet, and desktop sizes. Um, so we can see the decision to have the iframes has its drawbacks, the main one um, being that we can't edit or remove that grey toolbar at the bottom. Um, so it looks a bit, a bit out of place, but overall, um, the data visualization, data visualization people did a great job matching all the colours and fonts and all that sort of stuff up to make it look sort of like as seamless as possible. Um, from a content author point of view, the, si the three sizes is achieved by having a paragraph that field for each different size. Um, I tried to simplify the process by only having fields where iframe data would be different uh, to one another. This would be the title and the, um, and the link to the iframe itself. So typically what it spits out is that big long thing at the bottom, uh, which includes you know, the width and height and all that sort of thing. And to, this is, I did it this way so that I could set those uh, heights and widths so people couldn't start making their own kind of thing, make it um, just to keep everything like concise and stuff, so yeah. Um, so behind the scenes in the twig file, um, the rest of the iframe components are written out. This allows uh, for uniform output of things um, like height and width, as I said before, and then also um, when to hide or show something on a particular screen, screen width as well. Um, so although the original spec said there would only be one data set per content page, towards the end of the project, there was a request to make it, the load time a bit faster if there were three data, data sets on one page. So essentially the page was trying to load nine iframes at the same time. Um, so I knew of lazy loading for images, but I was happy to find that it also worked for iframes. Um, and the outcome was, was better than expected. Um, the SafeWork testing team came back to me saying that it had halved the time loading time for a um, page with three sets of data on the page and loaded, you know, obviously two thirds quicker when it was just one because it was, yeah, one. Um, this was the only scope creep that happened in the project. Um, and to me, that's pretty insignificant and probably something I should have considered when I was building it originally rather than them coming back to me. Um, there were two 
only two views um, to display content, for, and that was for the interactive data and the catalogue content type. Um, and essentially, they look the same as each other, so I've just got one here. Um, so the views, in views, um, the fields were gathered as required, um, and the output was written in a twig file and then styled. Um, the cards displayed here, um, I use CSS grid to ensure the responsiveness was smooth. So from full width, it has four cards, and then it's when you, you drag the uh, thing in, it goes three to two, and then single column for a, you know, the smallest or mobile width, and that works nicely. Um, the search was set up using Solar Search, uh, and content had taxonomy terms applied from two different vocabularies. Um, one vocab that was turned into a facet filter on the search page, which is that little box over there. And then the secondary taxonomy term on the, there's a secondary uh, taxonomy term, but it's not used for, it's not a filter, um, it's just used for searching purposes. So that field is um, just there. Um, anyway, at the, at the time this was done, um, there's, there wasn't much content. So any, if we did add more filters, it would be more filters than actual search results. So that's another reason. It's something we can also add on later if um, needed. So, um, Global Accessibility Awareness Day is actually tomorrow. Um, I only realised this last week, um, but of course it should be on our, at the front of our minds every day when we're building. Um, there's some stats that I've screenshot here um, from the Accessibility Day website. I think it shows that developer or at least digital teams um, can do a lot better if this is the percentage of things that can be fixed quickly and are just still issues. Um, I think the issues I see in Drupal sites is sort of more missing form input labels and empty buttons. Um, but personally, I think Drupal by default has a great way of making sure um, alt text on images is set if you don't mess with the default settings too much. Um, the one that stands out at the top is the low uh, contrast text, which means um, like say the background color versus the text color sort of clash. It might be you, know, you have a white background with yellow text, you just can't read it. And that also um, happens even if, when the font's really big, um, if it's made into a smaller size, it, become, it can become inaccessible. So having a dark theme um, made accessibility great for text, con uh, text contrast. Um, we weren't in the majority of those statistics on the previous page. Um, so there were a few minor um, fixes to be done, but overall the accessibility report was pretty good. Um, the tool here that uh, being used um, is called Lighthouse, and it's available as a um, browser extension. Um, it's definitely some others we used too, but this is the one that gave us some nice looking numbers there. Um, so this result is showing after we tested, af uh, after the forklift was done, but uh, the results were same beforehand. So we lifted up exactly the same thing that was put down. Um, so we had arranged for the forklift to take place on the last possible day of 2022. We worked hard to get everything done. Um, on time, despite a less than ideal start. I was impressed by the forklift process, and my computer's doing something. Um, by the forklift process with GovCMS, it went smoothly and faster than their um, suggested time frame. And I'd like to back that up by saying, I've done, had to do another forklift since, and I've had the same great experience. So if anyone's ever worried about it, I don't be, I guess. <laughs> um, and during that week, some of us from the Annex and SafeWork team uh, got together for lunch. Um, and although most of us are actually based in Canberra, this was the first time I'd actually seen everyone as a team. Um, so while this project finished in mid-December 22, it only went live into beta testing in March this year. Um, so the Mandarin, a new site made for public sector leaders and execs, published an article um, on this site going live into beta. So I often feel a bit apprehensive about anything I've built getting the limelight or being published or whatever. It's just like, oh, you know, are people going to point out where I've done something terribly wrong and so on. But um, to me, this was a nice, small <laughs> way of telling everyone it was live. Um, so in the end, the site was built on time, even though it seemed doomed and felt a little dark um, in another sense at the beginning. From the third week, development was reasonably quick with pr progress visible most days. Um, I, I made plenty of silly mistakes like refreshing the wrong tab multiple times as well as forgetting to re-enable JavaScript um, for a good hour or so when I was styling something, but at least I was doing it while looking at a dark theme. 
Google Analytics was enabled, documentation and training was completed, and pushing the code back to GovCMS was working smoothly as expected when the forklift was done. Um, I'm glad that the accessibility issues were minimal and that post-project no warranty fixes were needed that I'm at least aware of. Oh, no one told me of. Um, I was lucky that the project didn't have significant uh, scope creep as that, that you know, frequently happens on most projects and that the, and the safe work team were just a fantastic bunch of people to work with. Um, and my eyes um, at the end definitely appreciated the dark theme. Um, so I think, we, yeah, so we've been quite widified, you know, quit and worked on a farm or something outside. So it was good. So overall, it felt like a very quick and very rewarding six weeks on the dark side. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, so that particular one, uh, whatever it was called. Sorry. Um. That one. Yeah. Does it doesn't do responsive. Yeah. So that's why. Otherwise, the, the other way that it's done it, they are responsive, but you have to. I can't remember what it was, but you have to do. There's a lot more bright points of failure, I guess. Like you have to join this to this and this and this. It was just like, for a short project, it wasn't worth the time to get this thing set up, and they're like, oh, then someone has to get approved this and do that, and it was just not. Not, I think overall be better doing it the other way. Yeah. So I think because I think we came to the conclusion um, this is um, a proof of concept really. We'll see if people like this data, then we'll go all out and do something a bit more fancy. Um, so the question was, um, so the iframe approach is quite easy for a content author to do because you're just copying a it. snippet of code and you're pasting. If we took the other approach, would it be as easy? Yes, I hope. Know? Well, I don't. Well, I don't actually know, but I yeah. presume. I would, yeah, okay. I'd hope so. Um, I just haven't seen it. I guess we didn't didn't explore it um, yeah. to know. Yeah. And the other approach, you'd have the grey base removed, so it'd be a more seamless yeah. yes. display. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest. Oh. No, I think not being responsive is probably the biggest issue. The biggest but yeah. Issue. Valuable. Yeah. Valuable for me to know that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. we dive into it. Yep. Um, so then, um, with the lazy load, was there like a threshold where you felt the lazy load? If you've got like, um, say, a page with like, this site's planned 12, the cutoffs. Ah, uh, so it only loads, so the lazy load works by, so if you, if you go to a page and there's only one showing at the top, it'll only load that one until you scroll down. Um, so I don't think there's a threshold to how many you have. If that's what you mean, or it was more like um, you just loaded like twelve at yep. one time. Like I, I'm aware okay. that that's an issue. <laughs> yes. Um, so, but I was just wondering, like in your exploration of it, was yep. it like a threshold, like it's loading full work? It was just you had to find another. Oh no, it's working fine. It was just just slow. Yeah. Um, so. I can probably come up with a better answer later. Mm, yeah. <laughs> got, it, got it. And then my last question was, why, why did you... Yeah, uh, why, so, why yeah. Was so, yeah. The forklift was done because we... I just had so much trouble getting everything set up in the beginning. And I'm just like, I, I can't actually do anything. It wasn't so much for the content. It was just I wasn't getting anywhere developing on GovCMS itself. And it's like, nah, just stop it here. We'll do it on our own thing. So, right, we didn't probably didn't have to forklift in the end at all. Um, I just wasn't sure how much content was coming through at the, the start of the second, uh, third week. Weren't really sure how much content was going to be there. So it's like, I don't want to have to do something um, where we have to re-enter all the, all the um, content. So it's like, we'll just do a forklift and it was a really good experience. Um, uh, yeah. So in the end, Marge was the superstar of the project. <laughs> um, and you've probably seen that and, and really had three weeks to build the site was, was what actually happened. Uh, and yeah, got done and I think the clients were extremely happy and great communication the whole time and yeah, we came in under under hours somehow <laughs> and yeah, right before Christmas and, and it all worked out So and, and it is a great site. So yeah, it was, there was some stress, sure, at, at the end of week two, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm starting to sweat a lot and like your first, first yeah, first movie. project as a DM and, and, and a little worried, but um, yeah. All worked out and it was it was awesome. And yeah. thank you.
Did you learn anything from doing a dark theme? Because normally we build sites in like a light yeah. theme. Was there any like gotchas that you found along the way? No, I actually preferred it. Um, it was, especially with you know, the colour contrast, we knew if the text was white and we had dark, everything else, it was fine. Um, you didn't think of... need to do any support for light. It was no. just like the site was... Just dark. Dark by default. <laughs> yeah, dark by default. So there was... Um, I don't think there was anything surprising that came up in it all, no. Um, which is really good. Um, like I said, if anything, it was easier. I'd recommend it for everyone. Please do more dark, yeah. dark theme sites. Save it, our eyes. Save our eyes. <laughs> that's, I think that's the biggest thing. Eyes, eyes weren't burning.